I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use parameter modulation in Reaper. Now, parameter modulation is similar to automating or using envelopes to adjust our parameters, but the difference is, is it can be triggered very differently, making it easy to create repeating patterns, as you'll see. So, the track in front of us here, and to make it easy to hear what we're adjusting, I put all the tracks in a folder, and we're going to put an EQ plugin on the folder so we can hear the effect more dramatically. We'll go to the effects on the folder, we'll add an EQ, and we'll change the first option right here to low pass. We'll turn it on, adjust the bandwidth to be a bit sharper so we can hear it better, and then we'll adjust the frequency. So by changing the frequency on this low pass filter, it creates a very dynamic effect. So we're going to modulate this parameter with parameter modulation. Now the quickest way to deal with parameters is to select them or touch them, then go to parameters up here, and notice how it says last touched. Frequency low pass. So because we touched this one last, that's the one we're dealing with in this menu. Otherwise, we have to go down here and find it. So it's a lot quicker to just touch it and go over here. So we're going to choose parameter modulation for this parameter. And this opens up this dialog. From here, we can modulate that parameter. Now, there's three options or three different ways to use parameter modulation in Reaper. In this video, I'm going to show you the first way, which is using an audio control signal or using audio to control the modulation. I'll show you the other two ways in the next two videos. So if we choose this, we can send audio to this plugin and it's going to trigger that parameter or modulate it. So let's choose the audio channel right here. We could do channel one, two, or one and two, which is left and right. So right now the sound coming to this plugin is going to trigger that parameter. Let's adjust our baseline. Now the baseline is the same control as over here. It creates a starting point for modulation. So let's hit play. Now right now it's not doing anything. So we have to make some adjustments. Let's start off with the minimum volume. That's going to change the sensitivity to this audio input. Now the parameter is modulating. We can adjust the max volume over here. And again, we can adjust the baseline to affect our starting point or our center. Now down here are the attack and release. This decides how quick it reacts to the signal. With a faster attack, it's going to react a lot quicker. But if we slow it down, it'll be more subtle. Now down over here, we can change the direction. Right now it's set to positive, so the louder the signal is, the more the frequency moves to the right. But we can reverse it by choosing negative. Now when we do that, we have to readjust our baseline. So now when the signal gets louder, the frequency moves to the left instead of the right.
Now, right now, it's being controlled by its own input. But we don't have to do it that way. We can sidechain it, which means have a different track trigger this modulation. So let's go to our drum loop, which sounds like this. And let's send it to the EQ. Grab the routing, drag and drop it, change this to pre fader. Now the drums are being sent to the EQ from channel one and two to input three and four. So it can be used as a side chain. So down over here, we'll switch this to three and four. So now the modulation for this parameter is triggered by the drums, not by the input signal, which is everything. Let's hear that. So now this is being triggered just by the drums, not by the whole signal. Now to make it easier to hear this side chaining, let's take the drum loop out of the master pair and send. So it's still triggering or side chaining the rest of the track, but we don't even need to hear or use the loop itself. And this is what it sounded like before, without the modulating filter affecting the signal. And after. And to really get an idea of what the side chaining does, let's move the drum loop out of the folder so that the filter is no longer affecting it. Yet the loop will still be triggering the modulating filter on the other tracks, but not on its own track. Let's hear just the unfiltered loop. And now let's hear it all together. It's a pretty cool and powerful effect, and we can use this for pads or synths or even sustained guitars, and then use more rhythmic sounds to trigger effects or modulation to give them more motion or interest. So that's pretty much it for the audio control signal part of this video. In the next videos, I'll show you some of the other options for using parameter modulation. Thanks.